Yesterday, a few hours after the release of Attila, I decided to host a tournament, uh, the Scourge of God tournament, Flash tournament, which filled up fairly nicely and we got some really good games out of it. The first ever Attila tournament, so I was really excited to see what the players would do with the new factions and the new builds. And not surprisingly, the good players have gotten a handle on the game very, very quickly. You really wouldn't think they played the g this was the first day they played the game. And it's very similar to Rome 2 in that regard, but there are also some very important differences. And I think you'll see that mm, in the builds that are uh, competitive and viable in this tournament. So for Wingman, this is Wingman versus Armenian King. Uh, Wingman has Saxon Lancers. Nordic Horse Lords. I can zoom in on them as well so we can have a look. Saxon Lancers. Nordic Horse Lords. Saxon Mounted Warband. Nordic Raid Leader, two handed axe guy. Then we have Saxon Lancers, Nordic Horse Lords. So even for a faction you would think would be very melee focused. We have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 cavalry units. In the front lines he has two Nordic Spears. They are backed up by elite Nordic Warriors. Nordic Warriors. More Nordic Warriors. Also some Nordic Hurlers here. And Slingers would be quite decent against the enemy skirmishers. Well, they are decent, but they would be extremely good. If they would only have more ammunition, they only have these hurlers have nine ammunition, which is laughable. For a meaning king, we have elite Sarmatian cataphracts. He's commanding the Alans or the Ulons. He has Germanic spears in his center. He has Sarmatian warband. Cool looking unit. Uh, then he has noble Germanic swords. And Germanic Spears. Sarmatian Cataphract Archers. Medium Bow Cavalry. Elite Sarmatian Cataphracts. So he has quite a lot of cavalry here. And... Looks like we might have an engagement starting soon. Firing at the Nordic Spears, but... Skirmishing? Not super effective against infantry that has decent shields. Some standard infantry units have up to 70% chance to block incoming missiles. Frontal cavalry charge here. Bit late, bit slow, but noble Germanic horsemen are still going to do massive damage to the Nordic warriors. Good cavalry charge up the center into the Nordic warriors here. The follow-up by the summation warband is going to hurt these Nordic warriors a lot. Same thing happening over here though for uh, Wingman. The Sarmatian Warband is taking a right beating from cavalry. These types of charges are so devastating. You see the Nordic Spears are just disappearing under the uh, under the onslaught of of uh, elite Saxon units. But in the center things are looking good for the Ulans. Saxon Lancers with a lot of kills. Most factions have some very nice infantry options in this game. Or some very nice cavalry options, I mean. Not sure units like these Sarmatian Cataphract Archers are worth it. They can be nice in melee afterwards, but I would much rather have liked to see cheap, cheap horse archer units and uh, more melee cavalry units. That's more, more viable. So the main engagement here has been dominated by cav charges, which you see a lot of. But the infantry of uh, the Nordic warriors... The Sarmatian warband is very good offensively, but it, it, it's not a very sturdy unit. It's decent enough. But it has quite a bit less uh, health than quite a few of the other elite troops, and it's only a mid-tier sword. So the general for Armenian King has just died. His horse archers have a lot of kills, but mainly because they have been engaged in melee. Our men return to the fight. These elite Sarmatian cataphracts are being kept in the fight, and they're going to 
eventually get beat down by Saxon Lancers and Nordic Warriors. They have a massive amount of uh, health. 234, not the highest in the game by any uh, stretch of the imagination, but uh, still quite a bit. Nordic Hurlers out of ammo, charging into these Sarmatian Cataphract uh, Archers. And you'll see even, even uh, medium bow cavalry like this charging in is going to do massive damage. Here we have Noble Germanic Horsemen being beaten down by Saxon Lancer and Lancers and Nordic Horse Lords. Not a whole lot left on the field now for Armenian King. Quite a few Saxons and not many Yulans or Alans, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Saxon Lancers charging into the Noble Germanic Swords. And despite the name, Noble Germanic Swords are not great units. Take a look at the fight there. Cavalry is so deadly, it's almost not even funny. Except it's pretty funny, and <laughs> it's pretty fun. Shogun 2 players have compared the importance of cavalry more to Shogun 2 than what it was in Rome 2, which I haven't seen anyone that likes Rome 2 more than this. I mean, at release, sure, this is built upon Rome 2, but this is a whole lot of fun, a whole new pace to the game. So, in terms of army composition here, uh, these two horse archers didn't do too much. Armenian king has five melee cavalry, and uh, the Saxons have six melee cavalry. The difference between, between having f uh, five melee cavalry and having uh, six melee cavalry charging into front lines might not be massive, and indeed, in this battle, it also came down to the Saxons having more spear support than the Yulans. I was a bit surprised to see uh, to see see the Yulans for um, for Armenian King not have spear support. That might be because they were up against the Saxons and figured they they were going to have to beat down a lot of infantry, which which makes sense. Uh, these Nordic hurlers got some kills, but nothing substantial. I did contribute nicely to the battle though. But you'll see what you'll see in this this battle and several other battles is cavalry playing a key part in the battle. Sword units that get charged by by cavalry are going to have a bad time. And of course, we have the Elani general or the Yulan general. So Armenian king actually had he actually had a total of eight cavalry units against five cavalry units for uh, for wingman. But I. You'll see this in some other games, but getting that first cavalry charge against infantry and, and repeatedly doing so is so massive in this game. Uh, games are won and lost in the first engagement. It's not as long and grindy as, as uh, Rome 2 in terms of how long it takes to kill infantry, but cavalry fights takes forever. If you counter... If you counter um, Infantry with cavalry you have some very short fights, but when you have cavalry and cavalry engagements, they take ages to finish So I hope you enjoyed this battle. I will be uploading the rest of the battles from the tournament shortly thanks to uh, wingman and Armenian King for For being in the tournament uh, uh, Wingman is going to advance to the next round strength and honor